All right, guys, we're going to start our unit on one variable inequalities. Today, we're going to learn how to write them and graph them. It's going to start really easy. So inequalities, they're your what your elementary teachers used to call the little crocodiles. Well, they're not crocodiles. They're called inequalities. Okay, there is this symbol right here. This one right here. This one. And this one is these are the most common ones now some students still don't know how to read this one okay well this has to be your less than symbol because your left hand if you pick up your left hand your left hand makes that symbol okay so this is the less than symbol this of course is the greater than symbol this is the less than or equal to And of course, this is the greater than or equal to. <clears throat> and basically, we use inequalities in math because sometimes problems don't have just one number as the answer. It could be a range of numbers. All right, so first of all, let's talk about the word less than and let's talk about some words that reminds us of the word less than. So. Less than is not the only way to say it. Sometimes instead of less than, they can say fewer than. Instead of greater than, maybe they can say uh, more than. So this one would be fewer than or equal to. and more than or equal to. Another word that uh, you're going to see is the word at least. Okay, so at least a lot of students get confused that because they hear the word least, they right away think it has to do with the less than symbols. Okay, but if you think about it, if I were to say hey, complete this Kahoot, and you're going to at least get 10 points. That's the least I'll give you. That means you can get 10 or more, actually. So when you hear the word at least, it really means more or equal to that. So it really means this one. Because I'm telling you the minimum that you can get. So you can get that or more. Okay, and just like this is a little tricky, so is at most, okay, at most. So if I tell you, hey, make these corrections on your test, I will at most give you 70. That means that's the most I can give you so you can earn 70 or less. So the phrase at most refers to the less than or equal to because I gave you the maximum. So that's the highest you can go. So you can have that or less. Okay. So these are some words that uh, you're going to see as we're writing some out. <clears throat> so let me go ahead and give you some examples. Let's just get right to it. So see if you can understand it better. And I'm sure you've done this in the past. So this unit should not be very difficult. So if I give you this example, This is read as x is less than 5. And if I'm going to graph that, I don't need to put every single little increment on here. In fact, I just need to put 1. I need to graph my point. Okay. And then I need to decide, okay, what type of circle am I going to put? What does this less than mean? Okay. Well, first of all, <clears throat> numbers that are less than would mean like 4 right? 4.9, you know, everything in between right there. But 4, 3, 2. How about a 5? Is 5 less than 5? No, it's not, right? So then I got to show the reader that, you know, this is just going to be my starting point, but that I don't want to include it because 5 is not less than 5. So then in that case, I would show it like this. You would do what we call in math an open circle because you're telling the reader, hey, you're not going to include the 5. 
five is not less than five, right? And then less means you're gonna shade to the left. Okay, so then we're gonna go like this. I'm gonna do my highlighter. And if you notice right here, there's like a little uh, shortcut. This right here, your symbol, it matches the end of the arrow. Okay, so it kind of tells you where to go. So when you get any less than symbols, you are going to shade left. And of course this one as well. And of course for the greater than you would shade to the other side, which you shade right. All right, let's do another example. X is greater than negative one. I would draw my number line, put my number first, and look at my symbol to decide what kind of circle I'm gonna draw. Well, again, negative one would not be greater than negative one. I just want numbers greater than that. So zero, one, two, three, all those work, but negative one, I don't wanna include it. So again, I put an open circle, and this time, since it's the greater than, I want to shade to the right. So I'm going to make a little note on my notes up here that the symbols like this that do not have the line at the bottom, they don't have the equal sign. Okay, so these right here, you're going to use these type of circles. You're going to use open circles. Okay. <clears throat> Let's do another example. X is less than or equal to zero. Draw your number line. Make your little increment for your number. And this time, because of the equal sign, guess what? I do want to include the zero. And the way you tell the reader that is by drawing a shaded circle. A shaded circle tells me that a zero, zero is equal to zero, so zero works. And then I want everybody else that's less than, so negative ones, negative twos, negative threes, because I want to shade to the left. Do you see that? So open circles do not include that number, but closed ones do because of the equal sign. And another example. And I don't always have to use X, I can use whichever variable. So I'm going to put my negative 5. I know the greater than is telling me I'm going to shade to the right already, right? Because it matches my arrow. But the equal is telling me, hey, what kind of numbers can X be if I wanted it to if I want it to be greater than or equal to negative 5? Well, it could be negative 5 because of the equal sign, and then greater negative four, negative three, negative two, one, zero, one, two, three, it could be all of those. So I'm gonna shade this way, and I need a closed circle because the negative five would work. So then right here, the ones that do have the equal sign at the bottom, let's make a little note that these, and let me write it right here, okay? We're gonna use we call it closed circles, but you can call them shaded circles, whatever you need to call them. Okay. All right, so let me do a couple more examples. One thing that you always want to remember when you're reading these inequalities, okay, is you always want to read them with the variable first. X is less than five, okay? Sometimes they'll want to trick you and they'll write it with the number first and then the variable second. That can get confusing later on when we start doing more stuff with inequalities. So I want you to make a little note that I always want to start with the variable, always. Okay, so make a little note here. Make sure inequality 
starts with a variable. If it doesn't, you must flip the numbers and flip the inequality. Okay, so for example, if I were to write this, A lot of students get confused on how to graph this, okay? So if it doesn't start with the letters, yeah, this one starts with the number. Um, no, nope, don't, don't start it with the number, start it with the letter. So you are gonna flip them. So you're gonna write the X first and then the three the way that we want to, but then this one is gonna change. You see how the little uh, point is pointing to the X? Well, that's why you gotta flip it so that it continues to point to the X. Okay, so flip your numbers, flip your sign. These two are the same, except trust me, later on, it's going to be a lot easier to always make sure you start with the letter. Okay, so that's what I mean by starting, by, uh, starting with the letter. Okay, let me turn my page really quick. All right, so a couple more examples and then I'm going to give you your independent practice. So... What if I had a phrase that said, um, what if I had something that said three actually, no, three. No, let me not do that one. That one's going to be for later. What if I had something like this? Y is greater than 8. And I asked you to graph it. You would just put the 8. You will look at your inequality. If it doesn't have the line at the bottom, it's going to be an open circle. And because this says y is greater than 8, that means I want all the numbers bigger than 8. So 9, 10, that means I'm going to shade to the right because it matches the arrowhead over here. Okay? But vice versa, instead of graphing it yourself, sometimes you are given the graph and you've got to give me the inequality. Okay? So for example, what if I gave you this? And I told you to write an inequality. Well, here's how you write an inequality. You pick whatever letter you want. I'm going to pick E. You go and see where it's shaded. So if I stand right here at the dot, where did it shade? To the right or to the left? Well, it's shaded to the left. And I know left means my left hand. So if I pick up my left hand, it makes that symbol. So I know it's going to be that symbol. Then I go check out my dot. Since my dot is closed, I'm going to want the equal sign, and then I just put my number. <clears throat> Let me do another one. letter, stand at the dot, and look where the shading is at. The shading is on the right. So right hand is this one, the greater than. Look at your dot. Your dot is an open circle, which means no, do not add the equal sign. And then just put your number.
what if I gave you this one? And this will be the last example. How would you grab something like this? R is not equal to 6. How would we graph that? R is not equal to 6. Well, let's see. Here's the 6, and it's saying R cannot be it. Well, again, what kind of circle do we use to show that we don't want to include it? The open one, right? So if it's not equal to that, then what can it equal? They didn't tell us it couldn't equal anything else, right? It just can't equal that one. That means that it can equal everything else. It can equal everybody over here and everybody over here, as long as it's not equaling the six, okay? So hopefully you understood how to graph an inequality yourself and how to write an inequality given the graph yourself. All right, on Wednesday, we're going to actually um, be given phrases, and we have to match them to the inequality and to the graph, okay? But it's going to be a little bit more difficult. We're actually going to be solving. All right, so make sure that you understand this and you turn your independent assignment.